I want to give a word about um, fasting and uh, about states of being that we experience and how it relates to our connection to God. Um, we Orthodox Christians are fasting because it's the uh, Nativity Fest, the fast that leads up to Christmas or the Nativity of Christ. And um, when one of the benefits of fasting is that as you empty yourself of food and hopefully other things, hopefully you're emptying yourself of sinful thoughts and, and sinful habits, um, as you empty yourself of all these things, you you're you're more easily drawn to prayer because you find your subsistence in God in a more uh, more obvious way. It just becomes clear that you get your your, your the God breathing into you is what's giving you life, and uh, we know this as Christians. But it just it's it, it just becomes more clear when you fast. Um, it's one of the benefits of fasting. And uh, one of the things I've noticed, just observing my own, uh, as I said, state of being, uh, when I'm praying a lot, when I'm fasting, um, you know, the, the love that I have for other people grows. I think about other people in a more uh, almost romantic way. Which is can be dangerous because that can lead to emotionalism, so there's a danger there. But um, generally, you know, we 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 are when we pray more, when we fast, when we do things that Christians have always done classically, uh, we we are actually drawing nearer to God and receiving more of His energies, and we're looking at the world in a way closer to how. God looks at the world. So we naturally feel a greater love for other people. And um, I find that this is at kind of the heart of the insight I wanted to share in this video is that um, I'm, a, I'm a very sinful person, but I know that I always, in my prayers, and especially in those kind of pain of heart prayers when I've maybe sinned greatly in it and, and, uh, and I need forgiveness I think to God that I, I pray to God that that longing which is in my heart of hearts you know we always say heart of hearts um, that longing in the heart of hearts is that it be that it be what animates me because I think in you know it is a cliche in a sense, but it is real that there is an innermost part of the heart, which is what we mean when we say the heart of hearts. That innermost part of the heart is that's where God is in every person. It's the part of you that's most honest about yourself, the part of you that is most self, selfless and self-giving, that part of you that seeks for the best in others and if you're a true Christian, seeks for the best even in your own enemies. Um, that all exists that that in the heart of hearts, and when you are really connected to that place, that's 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 where God is, and that's a state of being. That even a layman like myself, as, as a very sinful layman like myself, can find. Um, I imagine that this is kind of the the state that that holy monastics attain to achieve always, you know, to be constantly in that that state of uh, constantly in that place of the heart of hearts. But it is available to all people, and um, it's it's just a great. I don't know what to say about it. It's a it's a real experience of God. It's not something that can be reduced to language. But I think uh, in the day to day reality, when I'm at work or driving 
Well, actually, driving can, is an opportunity often for good, for, for prayer and stuff. So driving is good. But um, what about work? When I'm in mixed company, when I'm around especially uh, secular people or secular situations, I'm not in that state of being that's in the heart of hearts. I'm in this sort of farther out. I'm hopefully still close to that heart of hearts, but this is what I want to illustrate, is that there's these sort of levels outside of the innermost part of the heart that we can lose ourselves in. And the farther away from the middle we get, the more susceptible we are to delusion and uh, to, you know, sin and to despair and maybe not, not praying and feeling, you know, I know... Uh, if I find myself not keeping my prayer rule, it's often because of laziness and despair. Uh, laziness, that, that kind of that fatigue that comes over you as soon as you think you should, you should pray. I think a lot of people know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, may the Lord deliver us all from that. Um, but laziness and then despair. If, if I don't pray a lot, then I don't want to pray at all, you know, it's, it's, that's this tough battle that we're all in as Christians, um, so I, I hope that I've elucidated something, something here, but, uh, in making this video, I had some kind of thoughts sitting there at the tip of my tongue, and, uh, I wanted to vocalize it, so, I am a, uh, neophyte, that is someone who, I've only been a baptized Orthodox Christian for just over a year now, so I'm still, I consider myself very new to the faith, so I take everything I say with a grain of salt. But um, I think, fortunately, God gives us all little insights here and there, because we're all on a path. I mean, even before I was a Christian, I was still learning lessons. God is giving everybody lessons, and so there's, there's value in, in all of that. I think that's all I've got to say. So thank you for listening. God bless and have a glorious day.